In the vast expanse of the ocean, where the sky kissed the water's edge, there lived a seagull named Gulliver. Gulliver was a curious bird, with feathers as white as the crests of waves and eyes as sharp as the edge of a storm. He soared above the ocean, riding the gusts of wind with a grace that was the envy of the sky. Below him, the sea shimmered like a blanket of sapphires, hiding secrets and stories that stretched far beyond the horizon. Gulliver loved the sea, for it was his home and his world. He was the king of the air, free to wander as he pleased, and he often spent his days exploring the coastline, diving for fish, and basking in the sun. His fellow seagulls admired him for his daring nature and his ability to find food even in the most challenging conditions. One day, as Gulliver was gliding over the water, he noticed something unusual. There, amidst the waves, was a fish that sparkled like a gem. Its scales reflected the sunlight in a kaleidoscope of colors, and it seemed to dance through the water with a joy that was contagious. Gulliver had never seen anything like it before, and his curiosity was piqued. Chapter 2. The Enchanted Fish Intrigued Gulliver swooped down closer to the water to get a better look. The fish noticed him and, instead of darting away like most fish would, it swam up to meet him. Hello, Gulliver, the fish said in a voice as smooth as the ocean's surface. My name is Finley, Gulliver was taken aback. He had never met a talking fish before, how do you know my name? He asked, his voice filled with wonder, I know many things, Finley replied with a twinkle in his eye. The sea whispers its secrets to those who listen. Gulliver was enchanted by Finley's words. You are a remarkable fish, he said. I have traveled far and wide, but I have never encountered a creature quite like you. Finley laughed, a sound like bubbles rising to the surface. I am no ordinary fish, he said. I come from the deep, where magic flows through the water like a current. I have seen wonders that would amaze even the most adventurous of seagulls. Gulliver's heart raced with excitement. He had always longed for adventure, and here was a chance to experience something truly extraordinary. Chapter 3. The Journey Bagans Would You Like to Join Me on a Journey? Finley asked, his eyes gleaming with excitement. There is much to see and discover in the depths of the ocean. Gulliver hesitated for a moment. The sea was vast and unknown, full of dangers that could easily swallow a seagull whole. But the promise of adventure was too tempting to resist. I would be honored to accompany you, Gulliver replied, his voice filled with determination. And so, with a flutter of his wings and a splash of water, Gulliver and Finley set off on their journey. They traveled together, exploring coral reefs that glowed with vibrant colors and underwater caves that shimmered with hidden treasures. Finley showed Gulliver the wonders of the deep, from schools of fish that moved like a single entity to the mysterious creatures that lurked in the shadows. As they journeyed deeper into the ocean, Gulliver and Finley formed a bond of friendship that transcended the boundaries of their worlds. They shared stories and dreams, laughing together as they swam and soared through the water. Chapter 4 the Hidden Kingdom on Day, Finley led Gulliver to a place unlike any other they had visited. It was a hidden kingdom beneath the waves, where fish of all shapes and sizes lived in harmony. The kingdom was ruled by a wise old turtle named Tiberius, who welcomed Gulliver with open fins. Welcome to our home, brave seagull, Tiberius said in a voice that rumbled like distant thunder. We have heard tales of your adventures and your kindness to our friend Findlay. Gulliver was humbled by the warm reception. It is an honor to be here, he replied. Your kingdom is a marvel beyond words, Tiberius smiled, his eyes crinkling with wisdom. There is much to learn and discover in our world, he said. But there are also challenges that we must face. The kingdom was facing a threat from a group of predators that had invaded their waters. The fish were afraid, and the once peaceful kingdom was on the brink of chaos. Chapter 5. 
The call to Axiang Liver listened intently as Tiberius explained the situation. The predators were larger and more powerful than any fish in the kingdom, and they had disrupted the delicate balance of life beneath the waves. We need someone brave and clever to help us find a solution, Tiberius said, his gaze fixed on Gulliver. Will you help us, Gulliver? Gulliver felt a surge of determination. He had always been a protector of the sea, and he couldn't stand by while his friends were in danger. Of course, I will help, Gulliver replied without hesitation. Together, we can find a way to restore peace to your kingdom. Finley beamed with pride at his friend's courage. I knew you would say yes, he said. You have the heart of a hero, Gulliver. Chapter 6 The plan with Finley by his side, Gulliver set out to devise a plan to deal with the predators. They gathered information from the fish in the kingdom, learning everything they could about the invaders and their habits. Gulliver realized that the predators were only acting out of hunger, and if they could be redirected to another food source, the kingdom could be saved. He shared his idea with Tiberius, who nodded in agreement. It is a wise plan, Tiberius said, but it will require courage and cunning to execute. Gulliver and Finley worked tirelessly to implement their plan. They enlisted the help of the kingdom's fastest fish to lure the predators away, while the others worked together to create a diversion. Chapter 7 The battle for peace every day of the plan's execution arrived, and tension hung in the water like a storm cloud. Gulliver and Finley led the charge, guiding the fish as they put their plan into action. The predators took the bait, following the swift fish away from the kingdom. Gulliver and Finley worked together to ensure the predators were safely redirected to an area where food was plentiful. The plan was a success, and the kingdom was saved. The fish cheered and celebrated, their joy echoing through the water like a symphony. Tiberius praised Gulliver and Finley for their bravery and ingenuity. You have shown us that even the smallest of creatures can make a difference, he said. Our kingdom owes you a great debt. Chapter 8 A hero's farewell with peace restored to the kingdom. Gulliver knew it was time to return to the skies. He had experienced a world beyond his wildest dreams and made friends he would never forget. As he prepared to leave, Finley swam up to him, a look of sadness in his eyes. I will miss you, my friend, he said. You have taught me the meaning of true friendship. Gulliver felt a pang of sadness as well, but he knew that their bond would endure no matter the distance. I will miss you too, Finley, he replied. But I promise to visit whenever I can, with a final farewell. Gulliver spread his wings and soared into the sky, the wind carrying him home. He looked back at the ocean below, knowing that he had left a part of himself in the depths of the sea. Epilogue The legend of Gulliver and Finley in the years that followed, the tale of Gulliver and Finley's adventure became a legend among the creatures of the sea and sky. Their story was told and retold, a testament to the power of friendship and the courage to face the unknown. Gulliver continued to explore the world, his heart forever touched by the magic of the deep. And in the hidden kingdom beneath the waves, Finley swam with a renewed sense of wonder, knowing that true friendship was the greatest treasure of all. And so, the seagull and the fish lived on in the hearts of those who heard their story, a reminder that even the most unlikely of friendships can change the world.